Congress on September 7th. After everything I had seen and heard, I began to question the effectiveness and purpose of the supposed surveillance in the dossier, especially in light of the unsolved murders of rap stars Tupac Shakur, Biggie Smalls, and Jam Master J. And Pop Cops, they don't have shit to do with nothing. They ain't Bottom line is, shit. Big died. Jam Master J died. Pac died. Yeah. Fuck rappers. They humans, and no they doubt. died. No doubt. Who did it? Find them. Yeah, when Big died and shit, they showed us pictures and shit of us that night. I'm looking at the pictures like, y'all was in there? We just went outside about a couple minutes later and got killed. And you sit here, you don't know what happened? That's the same reason why. There's a hundred other murders in a hood that ain't so. Actually, I don't really think they give a damn. They just want to make it look like they're doing something. How that dude been killed with all that information around all those people and nobody don't know what the hell happened. It's almost like, they're letting people go. I think cops got something to do with the murders. It's no, it, let me say something. Biggie, Tupac, these niggas got laid down in front of wild cops, in front of wild shit, and niggas got away. Like, I don't understand that. Everybody wants to go to heaven and nobody wants to die. So yeah, everybody wants to find Pox killer. Everybody wants to find out who killed Big, but nobody like kind of wants the cops around. I was looking at Nas on MTV. Nas was just saying after Pac and Big died, it just felt like they could, they had justification to pass all these new rules that would make hip hop illegal. On June 21st, 2004, Valletta Wallace, the mother of the notorious B.I.G., won a court decision to bring a wrongful death suit against the LAPD for being involved in the murder of her son. The lawsuit focuses on former LAPD officer David Mack, who is currently in jail for bank robbery. On July 8, 2004, a federal judge declared a mistrial in the case. It was revealed that an LAPD detective withheld documents that were critical to the Wallace family's argument that LAPD officers played a role in his death. The judge has ordered the city of Los Angeles to pay the family $1.1 million in legal costs. Documents found in the offices of the Los Angeles Police Department contain information that could link former LAPD officer Rafael Perez and David Mack to the murder. Both at one time worked security for Death Row Records and Suge Knight. Both were also part of the worst police scandal in the history of the LAPD, the Rampart Scandal. In the late 80s and early 90s, the drug trade was at its peak in Queens. It was reported that Irv Gotti idolized and revered the neighborhood's famous drug kingpins. You being from Queens, I noticed that rappers like to shout out a lot of drug dealers on different songs and stuff like that. Have you ever heard of somebody named Kenneth Supreme Griffin? Yeah, I heard, I heard. Does he have any affiliation that you know of with Murder Inc? Anything like that? No affiliation that I know. Of. There's all these assumptions that a lot of People in the hip hop game came from the drug game, and they did. A lot of people came from the streets. This was a way out for a lot of people. We all come from the streets, you know what I mean? So a lot of niggas got smart, you know what I'm saying? Stacked up a couple of stacks and, you know, put it to a better use. What I would have is a huge bulletin board with who I thought was the head of it, John Gotti at the top, uh, to use the mob sort of thing, and then who was the consigliere, and who were the captains, and who were the associates. That's exactly what this is. This is this particular murder ink. This is who they out contract to. This is what they do. And you start picking them off. The 
Murder Inc. case would be a benchmark for federal law enforcement. A trial of money laundering, murder, extortion, and hip-hop music. Did the feds have enough evidence to meet the burden of proof, or were they grasping at stereotypes within a culture? The trial would shed light on the contradictions within hip-hop and its relationship to law enforcement. In the early days of the trial, hip-hop heavyweights turned out to support and weigh in on the case being presented in open court. Spent a lot of money on this trial. Price and, and you look you look closely at the trial, and you'll see again the results and you'll see what tremendous waste of resources it was. What do you think the results will be? I'm sure the results are gonna prove that they're, that they're not a strong case at all. We do know that there's a problem in our community here to address that. Poverty and ignorance in our community is more important than convicting their poets. Thank you. So you think it's a just a guilt by association? Honestly, I don't know what it is. There's no guilt at all. As I see it. I don't I don't see anything that that, that, that represents guilt. As the prosecution presented its case, they seemed obsessed with having the attempted murder of 50 Cent allowed into evidence. After two days of tense deliberations and sidebars, Judge Edward Corman ruled the jury would not hear about the shooting or how it tied into the charges of money laundering against Irvin Chris. This was a pivotal part of the trial as it undermined the prosecution's attempt to connect Irvin Chris to the shooting. It's not over, and, I, it's, and when it's over, I'll tell you how I feel. <laughs> how are you feeling? It's up to the jury now. Well, we feel good, but we've spent, spent a long day uh, making our arguments. Uh, we stand on what we said in the courtroom, and uh, we we'll look forward to tomorrow. What do you think is going to happen tomorrow? We're going to well, win. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. are we're, you? We're confident. We deserve to win. Why? Because the evidence was so just ridiculous. How's it look today, gentlemen? Good. The weather's good? Nice night. The hip hop industry watched closely as the jury deliberated the case for the next two days. enough to these two guys that I, I got my arms wrapped around. These guys are my attorneys for life. I'm never getting into any other trouble, though. You could put your bottom dollar on. I'm never, no jaywalking, no nothing. And I was never in trouble in the first place. I would never have worked this hard, come from having zero dollars to having millions of dollars to jeopardize it in doing something stupid or illegal. It's not in my make. What's in my make is to be the most loyalist friend and to help my brothers out. Everything this case was about, the messages that it sent was one, if you're a criminal, you stay a criminal. And two, if you're from the hood and you come up and you do well, don't help out nobody from there, leave them. And I have a problem with that because I love my people and I can't leave them behind. I got I to gotta show them a better way. I could get my life back. Not only did they take your life, but they took your livelihood because basically once the government put these charges on you, you couldn't earn money. So for three years, you, you, you couldn't go get money like you're supposed to. Basically to me, it felt like they wanted to cripple you so you couldn't protect your civil rights. Hip-hop is the backbone of America right now. And y'all know about it because y'all read about it and y'all write about it and y'all document it. And I'm just happy to say that we're in it. The end 
of the Murder Inc. trial marked the conclusion to my three years spent behind the scenes of the hip hop industry. As much as the members of the hip hop and law enforcement communities seem pitted against each other, many are equally pitted against themselves. There are far more questions than there are answers. I can conclude that the hip hop cops do exist, although maybe more as a mindset than an actual unit. Have the police overstepped their bounds and infringed upon the rights of those in hip hop? Have rappers come under the scrutiny of law enforcement because of the actions of some or for reasons that go deeper and strike at the heart of our fear and prejudice. Only when the crime and the violence surrounding hip-hop ends will we ever know for sure.